Praise the Lord. Uh, my name is Henry Mugluma, and I bring you greetings from everyone in my life. <laughs> Uh, everybody in my life, I bring you greetings. Uh, I always hear people bring greetings from somebody, somehow. So I was like, let me try out also bring <laughs> greetings. Amen. Um, my name is Henry Muguluma. It's always an honor to share with you the word of God. I never take it for granted. I'm always excited to be able to stand before the saints of the Lord, children of God, and share what God has put on my heart, what he has given me to share with you. And uh, let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for an opportunity to gather here. Oh God, may you speak to us, each one of us, in ways we can understand. And cause us, cause us, Lord, to hear your word, to obey your word, to do your word, to the glory of your name. In Christ Jesus we pray. Amen. I want to share with you a message that I've called, A Call to Shine. A Call to Shine. Very short title, and I pray that God will really use it in your life. And I will start by asking a question I've been asking in all the other services. That have you ever wondered what God wants you to do with your life now that you're born again? Ever since you accepted him to be your Lord and Savior. Have you ever been there? Asked, what does really God want me to do with my life? Have you ever asked or ever wondered what God wants you to do in that home, in that school, in that community, on that village, on the rentals where you're renting, in that job, that business you're doing? Ever wondered what God wants you to do every day he wakes you up and he gives you a new day and he gives you breath and gives you the energy and the strength and opportunity to live again. Ever wondered what does he really want me to do with this thing? And maybe you haven't. But God actually has an answer for that question. The question of what should I do now that I'm born again? What should I do in this home, in this marriage, in this school, in this job, in this position I'm in? in this neighborhood, on this village, what should I do? I want us to go to a scripture. It is in, in the book of Matthew. And Matthew was written by Matthew. I like that because if you had written the book in the Bible, most likely it would have been by your name. So if, if uh, my brother can see Andrew there, if Andrew had written a book, we would be reading the book of Andrew. I don't know what would be in it. Or if Sir had written one, maybe we'll be reading the book or the gospel according to Sir. <laughs> but we have to read Matthew. But the thing about Matthew is that Matthew was a disciple of Jesus. He was one of the 12 apostles. And the things he's writing down, he actually experienced them. He had them. And in, in, in chapter 5, which we are going to be reading, Matthew tells us about a sermon that Jesus gave. One time, Jesus just climbed the mountain, and people followed him, and he started giving them a sermon. It is a very long sermon. Most people think it's, it's short because of the beatitudes, but actually the sermon goes for three chapters. Chapter 5, Jesus is still talking. Chapter 6 is talking. Chapter 7 is talking. It's one of those long sermons. And Matthew captures it so well. Because it's a sermon about the kingdom life, how God would want you and I to live now that we are born again. It's how God wanted the people to live. It was radical in the way he preached it. In some things, he was inviting people to a brand new way of living and seeing things. But in some ways, it was very challenging for, for them. And one of the coolest things about this sermon is the people it was preached to. It was the people, when you read Matthew 5, verse 1, says Jesus went on the mountain and his disciples followed him. And among us, the disciples, there were men like you. Ordinary men, not high-profile people. Ordinary men like you. 
there were women like you, very simple, everyday women. Because it wasn't just the apostles, it was the disciples. It included the apostles and many more. There were married men. If you are next to a married man, tell him like you. If you don't know, you could ask, are you married, by the way, or not? It was given to married women. They were also there. So if you're next to a married woman, tell them like you. And among us, the audience, there were some unmarried people. Like, look for somebody. <laughs> some unmarried people. Like, <laughs> how come that was easy? <laughs> some unmarried people were also there in the audience, listening in to Jesus. Some young people, some students were there. Some business people were there, listening in to the Lord. Everyday people like you and I, not high-profile people. And then Jesus comes around and starts to talk to them. And in verses 14, he says, you are the light of the world. And I'm thinking that these guys are saying, Jesus, wait a minute. Are you sure you're preaching to the right group? The last time we checked, we are just everyday men. We are simple fishermen. We are farmers. We are not Herod. We are not Pontius Pilate. We are not Romans. We are just everyday people. What are you talking about? We are not any VIP. When we come around, no one turns around. We are just everyday people. And they're thinking probably Jesus is going to mend his statement. He's going to change what he's saying. He's going to say, oh, sorry, I'd made a mistake. I know I'm supposed to be good. I'm not supposed to be make mistakes. This time around, I don't know what I was thinking. Yeah, I thought I was, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are, you, are, you are who you are. Let me leave you. No, he doesn't change his statement. He insists you are the light of the world. And he made sure that this is actually written down such that it is preached across the ages, even to us today. Now, when we gather, like we are gathering now, and we hear these words, he will be speaking these words to us, to you and to me. Everyday simple people. And you may be there, and I know that you are there, and God is saying you are the light of the world. And you're wondering, me? Really? Do you know me? Do you know where I come from? By the way, do you know how broke I am? Do you know this economy of Uganda? Did you just come in? I am the definition of brokenness. And you're saying, I am the light of the world. And Jesus would say, yes. Broke as you are, you are the light of the world. It doesn't change. And then you say, well, Jesus, uh, I'm renting. I don't even have a house. I'm not called the landlord, Jesus. The last time I checked, I'm the guy they knock at 5 a.m. before I get out, lest I run out. I am that guy. And Jesus would still say, yeah. As you rent in that particular place, you still are the light of the world. And you say, Lord, I don't even have a car. I'm that guy who just uses a taxi when I have money. When I have a little more, I use a border. And when I have nothing, I walk. I have to dust myself when I come here. So people don't realize how dirty and dusty the roads are. And Jesus would still look at you and say, yeah. Even as you walk, you are the light of the world walking. As you get on that border, the light of the world is getting on that border. You are seated in the taxi, the light of the world is in that taxi. He does not change his statement about you. And that is how beautiful and profound it is. Because what makes you the light of the world is nothing you have or you don't have. When you accept Christ to be your Lord and Savior, you are qualified to be the light of the world. It doesn't matter how small, how big, how a nobody, what people think about you, what you, you, whether you have a house, you have a car, you walked here, it rained, no matter what. You are the light of the world. And that is an amazing, amazing definition of who you are, 
but also an amazing expectation of what God expects from you. Now, for some people, they hear that and they think, yeah, but have you really seen the who is who in Uganda? I mean, the people, I was saying the other services, that the, the we, 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 we people, everyone knows them. You don't even need to, to, to mention them by name or number plate. You just hear we, 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 and if you're not a we, we, you get out of that way. The we, we only listens to we, 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 alone. And when you look at them, you may think, wow, those are really the light of the world. Because all of us, no matter how big your car is, or small it is, you just get over the we, we, we to pass. They really seem like the light of the world. But Jesus didn't tell them that they were the light of the world. He told every day people like you and I. I think a part of me understands why. You see some of those we, 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 we. Some of them put on suits and want. But really, some of them are big time thieves. Like, like a big time. Like no, they don't steal your small, small monies. They don't steal like 10,000, 100,000. Like they don't steal one million. Like, like a big time thieves. They are, they are billion shillings stealing thieves. You have actually to think about the number that they say. Like, what? So sometimes I think when they are doing the wee, wee, wee they are running. <laughs> and for you, you think those are the light of the world. Jesus says, no, they are not. They are thieves. Call them by their name. You are the light of the world. You with your integrity. You are the light of the world. You who says that is beneath me. You are the light of the world. You who cries at that. Like, how, what were you thinking to see all that much? They were not thinking. That's why they, they could do all that. And like, what? Jesus wanted you and I to realize that we, simple as we may be, we are the one he has chosen to light up the world. Praise the Lord. He goes on and says, you are a city. On the hill. He says, a city on the hill cannot be hidden. If you've gone to places and seen what a city on a hill looks like, it's really a city on a hill. You can't miss it. You just look to a place and you know, wow, it's just out there. It's always different from the places which are in the lowland. This one is on top. If, on the, if, if, if it's a hill and there is a tree, you will see the tree. If there is a house, you'll see a house. If there is a mast, you'll see a mast. You can't miss what is on the hill. Now, Jesus says, you are not like a tree on the hill, not a house on the hill. He says, you are a city on the hill. You are unmissable. Like, 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 they can't fail to see you, to recognize you. And when you hear this, you're like, really? That is a lot of pumping us up. Are we really that? You may not believe it. You may not believe it. But I'll give you two examples. Do you know that for many people who walk out of this gate, the border border think you're a pastor? As soon as you can say, hey, Musumba, Musumba, like, Banang. I've never been to Bible school. I'm not the senior pastor of Gaba Church. Don't mistake me for Pastor Sir or Pastor Peter. I'm not. They do not care. They just say, hey, Musumba Jangu. Even if you tell them, I'm not a pastor, they will not agree with you. For them, whoever comes from this place, there is an honor, there is a favor, there is something about their life because they are a city on a hill. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, whether you accept it or not, it doesn't even matter. The people recognize it. Then I was also telling the other services, but do you know that if a Muslim stole a goat or a hen, they would just say, hey, this man stole a goat. This man stole a hen. You, my dear brother and sister, a Christian, they are still one egg, not even a full hen, one egg. And they will say, hey, hey, stole. They may even say, Pastor Muguluma stole. What was an egg would become eggs? To become a farm, 
the standard raises when it comes to you and I who are believers. Why? Because we are a city on the hill. <laughs> Praise the Lord. People do not expect some things from you. You try to, pre- to say, well, I'm like you. I also have needs. I was also hungry. No. No, 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 no. You are a locally. Praise the Lord. Christ mentioned that about us. That whenever, wherever you will go, people will recognize you. They will see the way you talk, the way you handle yourself, the way you dress, the way you do things. I say, there is something different about you. Something different about you. Because a city on a hill is not like everything else. The same way with you, you are not like everybody else. You are different. In the eyes of God, and he has made it that in the eyes of this world, you are different. He goes on and says, Neither do people light a lamp and put it in the bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. True. Whether you light a candle, a lamp, these bulbs, you do not cover it up. You actually put it somewhere where everyone can see. And Jesus says, that is how you are. You, wherever you are, you're supposed to give the light to everyone who is in that place. People should see you and be renewed. See you and be blessed. See you and be enlightened. See you and they fix up themselves. The way if you are coming from the darkness and the buttons were not well done and then the light comes on, you will actually adjust. In your presence, people should adjust. People should say, they are going to say certain words and then they see you like, "Mm." you don't say that one when that one is around. Why? Because you are the light in that particular place. Praise the Lord. You're the pace setter. You're the standard of what is expected in society. Jesus had such an amazing, big picture, dream, vision for those people who followed him. He doesn't even say you are the light of one village. He says you are the light of the world. The whole world, everybody should look at you in the world and say, that is different. That is special. That is what I want to be like. And then in verse 16, he gets to the heart or to the climax of what he's trying to explain. He says, in the same way, like a city on the hill, like a light which is put in the house. He says, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. That was what he was moving towards. Not just to tell you such that you can feel nice and cool. No, no, no. He was saying, I'm telling you this because there is something I'm expecting out of you. I want you to shine your light before men that they may see your good deeds and praise, worship, glorify, honor, thank your Father in heaven. So turn to your neighbor and tell them, let your light shine. Please dry yourself in them and tell them, let your light shine. Now tell them as if you are actually trying to convince them, let your light shine. Because that message that Jesus is saying, we need to say it to ourselves and we need to say it to each other. We need to encourage each other to do exactly that. Let's look at those, a few words in that scripture, verse 16. It says, it says in the same way, let. Let means allow. It means accept. It means switch on. It means do not resist. It means agree. It means open up. It means do it. Let. In the house, normally, when there is a certain bulb, and you go on and switch it on, and, re- and it's not coming on, and you go and try out the other bulbs, and they are coming on, and you go back to this light, and it's not coming on, and if somebody was in the other room and said, what is going on? In Uganda, you'd say, meaning this bulb has refused. You can be a Christian who refuses to light you say, me, I've refused. For whatever reasons, maybe you are 
annoyed, you are what, but I have refused. Is the light there? Yeah, but me, I have refused. And some of the things that actually make you and I refuse to shine, <laughs> they, are, they, are, they are weird. Can you imagine that your money can make you refuse to shine? Like, I'm too rich. Like, like eh, how can I, rich as I am, shine before these ones? No, 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 no. Your money makes you, mm -mm, I'm, I'm above that. I can't come with my cool big car, pack it over there, 150 millions, and then you expect me to go and pack other, the other small, small cars over here. No, 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 no. Your education can stop you from shining. You can say, I'm too educated. Do you know how many blackboards I've seen? Seriously. I saw the first seven. Don't count nursery. I saw the next six. I went to the university. Where some people were seeing only three. I saw four or five. Then I went to masters. I saw others. What have you seen? You ask me to do what? You can't expect me, a master's holder, to stand on the door there and also usher people in. Not, not really. Your books can stop you. You know your tribe can stop you? People of my tribe do not mix with that tribe. And yet... Imagine the kind of message and gospel that would be preached if someone who is a master's holder, a PhD holder, whom all of us we know, they are that educated, get standard at the door there and they just welcome everybody. Imagine the power of that. Imagine the light that is shining there. Because that speaks volumes. We are like, Wow. We should be the ones welcoming you in. You are the one welcoming that there is God above. And he lives in you. And he changes hearts. Because a person who came driving, going over there to serve porridge, that speaks volumes. Like, wow. You are having a 100 million scar. And you are packing VTs for other people. Moreover, an old VT is not even a new one. But you're the one packing it seriously and humbling yourself. That speaks volumes. That is your light shining before men. They are seeing your good works and saying there is God in heaven. And he lives in you and he lives in this place. So let your light shine before men. Don't resist it. Don't fight it. Just let it come out. Don't refuse. It says your so let's try out to do something the nursery kids do. Work with me on this. Touch your head. Great, you're doing well. Touch your ears. I like how you're doing. Touch your nose. You're amazing. Now clap your hands. Great. So you know what your means. <laughs> you did yours. You didn't care about the neighbor. For you, you just touched your head. You touched your nose. You didn't care who wasn't doing it. Jesus is saying the same. You do your part. Forget who is not doing their part. Forget who is not shining. You do your part. Praise the Lord. Let your light shine. They may not be shining. Pastors are not paying tithes. Oh, even pastors, I don't see them paying the tithes, like putting in. Seriously, I'm sitting in four services. I put in the first, in the second, in the third. In the, maybe I put in the first, you didn't see me. But it's okay. Whether I put in or not, that is me. You, let your light shine by putting in your tithe to the glory of God. Praise the Lord. Don't think about who is not shining. Think about your light coming out. He says, light. Not your anger. Not your pride. Oh, let me show you. No, 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 no. Not your finger. <laughs> no, he didn't say that. He said, let your light. Some of us say, you know me, I'm angry. Eh? So, you want to bring out your anger. 
But I'm telling you, friends, you think you have anger, you've not met people who have anger. There are people who have anger, they get so angry, they get their iPhone 14, pwah, they are angry. They get their TV, pwah, they are angry. They even get their heads, they hit them on the walls, pooh, they are angry. I'm like, okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Seriously, I get angry, but that is crazy anger. So Christ didn't say, let your anger, let your pride, let your meanness. He said, let your light shine. He used the word light for two people. The first person who used the word light was himself. He said, I am the light of the world. Then he used it on you and I. And he said, you are the light of the world. So in case you don't understand, what does light here mean? Just put Jesus there. And it would mean, let your Jesus shine. Let the kindness of Jesus shine. Let the love of Jesus shine. Let the generosity of Jesus shine. At that point, you can't say you don't understand what light is. Just let the Jesus in you shine out of you to the people around you that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Praise the Lord. So again, tell, touch your neighbor. This time, shake them up and say, let your light shine. Like it's really, really that simple. It's not so complicated. And shine definitely means shine out there. Let it be on display. Let me touch just the last two words, and then I'll give you a few applications. It says, before men. When I stand here like this, I am before you. Right? Great. When you're seated where you're seated, you are before me. The way I see it, before simply means the people in front of you. So let your light shine to the person in front of you. Let your light shine to the children in front of you. To your wife who is in front of you. Your husband who is not in front of you. Your S2 students who are in front of you. The border border guy in front of you. The people in the text who are in front of you. The fellow students who are in front of you. Don't care about the ones who are not in front of you. Just the ones in front of you. Let your light shine before them that they may see your good deeds and worship your Father in heaven. Three applications for this message. Number one, I want you to ask yourself this question. How can I be the light today? After this service, how can I be the light today? When I go from this place, how can I be the light? When I go back home, how can I be the light? When I wake up in the morning, I say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for life. Ask, how can I be the light today? Go through the whole day just asking yourself, how can I be the light? And let the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ, who wants you to shine, keep pointing out the things where he wants you to shine. The things he wants you to do to shine. And they are very simple things. Kindness, goodness. Sometimes you just sit in a taxi and you see people coming in. Sometimes they're carrying babies on what. If you just sit next to this seat, which is very, very difficult when you're coming in, just open it up. And you'll be amazed when the person comes in and they just say, oh, thank God. Why? Because it's difficult. When they're just jumping into a taxi and it's moving and this chair is not yet done. Let somebody go back home saying, I don't know, but I was carrying this kid and this, and this man just opened this seat. And I sat. You've just let your light shine with your good deeds. <laughs> and somebody's thanking God somewhere because of what you did. Praise the Lord. So think through, what can I do to shine today? Second application, how can I be the light in this place? There is a place God has put you in. It may be a class. It may be a home. It may be a school. It may be a village, it may be a neighborhood, it may be a workplace, it may be a business, it may be a line of work, it may be a mountain, like we keep talking about the seven mountains. How can I shine in this place? How can I be the light in this place? Ask yourself that question. And see the answers that the Holy Spirit brings to you and do just that. Shine through that. It may be just being kind and wonderful and helping and nice and greeting 
there is somewhere where I pass. And for a couple of days, I would pass over that place and I'm going to my home. And I'm greet, not greeting people, I'm just minding my business, going to my home, coming out of my home, going to my home. Then one time the Holy Spirit just said, Muguluma Henry, do you realize what you're doing? You're not living like a Christian in this place. He says, but Lord, I've not abused anyone. I mind my business. They're minding their business. Everyone is okay. He said, I'm not okay with that. He said, okay, I had to swallow my pride. By the way, I'd already passed. And now I needed to pass again. <laughs> so wait. Now, one of the guys, we are border border guys, try to gather the courage, rehearse what I'm going to greet. <sighs> and then I said, I said, and then I moved. <laughs> I needed to do something because I could not face the Holy Spirit with disobedience. Then I met the other lady whom I had also passed for almost, I think, months. I'd never said, how are you? Then I paused and said, of course I was feeling ashamed. But I noticed actually the people smiled. They didn't expect it. They're like, yeah? Now I do it. Now it's easy. The first time was not easy, but second, third is easier now. Then I realize actually now people even humble themselves when I'm greeting them. It's as if I'm doing something so powerful, so wonderful. Who are you not greeting, by the way, when you are going to your home? Because that may be the light you need to shine. That people may see your good works in that place and glorify your Father in heaven. Last question you can ask yourself is, how can I be the light to this person? Every single day God put someone before you to be a light to them. Every single day. A border border guy, a taxi guy. Every time. Even when you're driving on the road, God puts people before you that you may be a light to them. Sometimes it's a taxi crazy guy or a border crazier guy or a Whatsoever craziest guy, they're like, look at that fool. But next time, anyone who does a foolish thing before you, before you also show them a lesson they will never forget, pause and say, if I do that, it will make two fools. Fool number one, and then fool number two. Then let your light shine. Before those border border, taxis, what people, that they may see your good works and say, eh, I met a different person today. They use the rod differently. Who is God putting before you today, this week? Is it in your home? I gave two examples I want to finish with to the other services. And this one I want to speak first to husbands. Now, everybody else, I want you to figure out your own applications, but Husbands, do you know, when was the last time, husbands, ladies, you may not listen to this, husbands, when was the last time your wife thanked God for you? When was the last time she said, thank you, Lord, for my man? Because that is a job, that is the reason why God gave you that woman. He didn't give you for so many other things, not to show off, that is my woman over there. No. He gave you that woman that you may let your light shine before her, that she may see your good works and glorify the Father in heaven. Many of the women, please you can go ahead and give God a hand clap for that. God brings women into your life. Some of them have been bruised, hurt, broken. And God says, I, know my, I have my Christian who will show you what it means to be a Christ-like husband. So when was the last time you were really a Christ-like husband? And your wife turned to you and says, honey, you're different. You're not like any other man. And maybe it may even be in the simpler things like apologizing. When was the last time you were really wrong and said, I am sorry? Hard as it is. Men, we have our ways of disguising it. <clears throat> that is not a sorry. That is, <clears throat> this is not a sorry. <laughs> Buying a new dress is not a sorry. Paying the bills is not sorry. 
paying your car, buying food, that is not sorry. Saying sorry because you blasted me before people is saying sorry. I am sorry. I shouldn't have done that. And then your wife says, wow, there is God in Henry Muguruma. <laughs> and he's alive. There is God. If we can do that in our 20 years of marriage, it's never happened. There is God, and he has come to this house, and he lives in my husband. <laughs> ladies, let me give you, ladies, one application for the ladies who have maids at home. You know, the scripture has said, the lamp is put and gives light to everyone in the house. When you have maids in your home, and you have another 13-year-old, 16-year-old, 17-year-old, and you're going to buy pads for them, sanitary towels, please don't buy for your daughters alone. Buy for the maid too. Let your light shine before them. Those little girls call you mommy. Don't just be proud of being called mommy without doing the responsibility of mommy. <laughs> be mommy. Mother, your 16-year-old girl, and mother, this other daughter God has brought to you. Because God wants your light to shine before her that she may see your good works and say, wow, this one is different. There is God in heaven and that God lives here and lives in mommy in the house. Praise the Lord. That is possible. You can do that. We can do that. Simple things like that glorify God. Praise the Lord. Don't say other people in other homes, this is how they do it. You are not other people. You're better than that. Praise the Lord. You are better than that. It says, let your light shine. Let them use their colonial methods. Use your Christian method. Show them the love of God. Show them what nobody else can show them in the world. Let them be amazed and say, this is different. A few years back, I got very sick. I went to a hospital. The doctor took less than 10 minutes and handed me three invoices. And he said I needed to do three operations. Less than 10 minutes. I talked to a friend and said, go to Mulago. And I said, really? I had gone to a private place. You are sending me to Mulago? But I went. I was in pain. First day, I didn't see the doctor from morning to evening. Came back angry. But I was sick. I went back for another day. I waited from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. I was the last person this doctor was seeing. Truly, this doctor had been working busy from morning till when I saw him. I was the last person. And when I came in, he called me by name, my name, said, Hey, Mr. Muguluma, you're welcome. I was like, he knows me? And then he said, So, you, you must have been waiting for long. I said, Yeah. I was angry at that time. I didn't want to know. You know those times when you're even tired of yourself? I was tired of myself. He said, I'm sorry that you've been waiting since morning. So how can I help you? And he attended to me. For almost 30, 40 minutes, he was asking me questions. I was giving him answers. And he put on his gloves and examined me. And I was showing him everything they had given me in the other places I'd gone to. And then he said, you know what? You don't have the complications they are saying. I said, you're sure? I said, yeah. I said, but they said, they gave me the idea. He said, no, you do not have anything. Yeah, okay. I looked at this man. The way he spoke to me, the way he handled me, I was like, wow. So I'm going out, and I call somebody. I was like, you know what? I've been to Mulago, and there is this doctor. He's amazing. He's called Dr. Okuku. And someone tells me, oh, that man is a Christian. That man is a Christian. He didn't open his Bible. He didn't put, I am Jesus follower. He didn't put a fish somewhere. No, he didn't even put multiplication and fruitfulness. He did not. He just let his light shine before me that I saw his good works and I went praising God up to today. He saved me money. He saved me from being cut for no reason, and he gave me a lesson I cannot forget and a testimony that I'm sharing with you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. May someone in the world go thanking God because of you. Praising the Lord because of you. Blessing the Lord because of you.
because you have let your light shine and they have seen your good works and they say, that is God. That can only be God. That is truly God. May the good Lord bless you.